Hello everyone, I am Stinkta Kakar and this is my channel Accelerate AI Careers. Today, we are going to discuss a very interesting lead code problem, lead code 1152. Analyze user website visit pattern. It is one of the favorites for Amazon, Microsoft and Meta in their interviews in last 3 to 6 months. So it's very important question. It's one of those craft questions. So let's see what does this question say. So the question says, you have been given two string arrays. One is an array username and the other is website and an integer array timestamp. All these given arrays are of same length and the tuple username i, website i and timestamp i indicate that the particular user username i visited this website at this timestamp. Essentially, the length would be same. Of course, because that user is visiting this website at this time stamp, so there is a corresponding value for each. You have to find a pattern there. What is a pattern that has been defined here in examples? The pattern basically means that in an increasing timestamp manner, for example, a user visited home, away, and loved these three websites. So the user actually visited this website first, then this website, then this website. So in increasing order of timestamp, you can have pattern. For example, a user Joe visited these five websites. So the pattern could be A, B, C, B, C, D, C, D, E. Now one which I missed out is it could also be A, C, D. It could also be A, D, E. So the, the, the websites could hop as one. Well. It's not necessary that you take them in sequential manner, but it's necessary they, they are in increasing order of timestamp. So you, you can even take A, C, D and hop off B here, you can take B, D, E and hop of C here, that's, o that's okay. But the timestamp should be in increasing order and that's how they have defined the pattern here. Now they have also told about score. Now what does this score mean? So say suppose a person named Joe has a pattern A, B, C and a per person named James also has a pattern A, B, C that he visits A website first, then visits B website and then visits C website. So essentially, they both are visiting the same website in similar order. So then the score for that particular pattern is 2 because there are two people visiting the websites in the same pattern. So you have to return the pattern with the largest score. That is, most number of users are visiting those websites in the same manner. Now this pattern should be of minimum length 3. It could be more, but the minimum length should be of 3. Let's look at an example so that you can understand the question better. But there is also one exception here which I forgot to mention, which is mentioned in the last row here. There could be more than one patterns which could have the max score. Then which one do you return? So in that scenario, you have to take the, the pattern with the la same largest score, but which is lexicographically smallest such pattern. Essentially, if A, B, C and B, C, D are two patterns which have the maximum score, you pick the one which is lexicographically smallest pattern. So I hope you understand the question. Let's look at an example so that you can understand it. Here in example one, you have been given username, which is a list essentially of all the users in the order they are visiting the website. So like Joe is one distinct user, James is another distinct user and Mary is the third user. And then there's an array called timestamp, which says that Joe visited at one timestamp and website he visited is home. Then Joe visited at two timestamp and the web website he visited is about. James visited four at four timestamp and the website he visited is home. Like that, you have some commonalities in the website the users have visited and you are also given the timestamps. Now you have to find distinct patterns and that particular pattern that has the maximum score. There could be more than one pattern which could have the same score. In that case, you return the one which is lexi lexicographically smallest. So let's look at this. So here the output is home about career. Why? Because for Joe also, home about career is one pattern. For James does not have home about career. Whereas Mary has home about career. So essentially, the tuples in this examples are Joe home 1, Joe about 2, Joe career 3. And then James home 4, James card 5. So essentially we are taking all users, the website they visited and the timestamp they visited it at. If you look here, the increasing order of websites visited is home about career for Joe, home card map home for James and home about career for Mary. So home about career has a score of 2 since Joe and Mary both have that in common. 
whereas all the other patterns have either a score of 1 or 0. So that is the maximum score which a pattern has obtained and hence that is your output. Now let's look at example 2. So here your usernames are these. You have two distinct users UA and UB. There you have six timestamps and you have these six websites. So if you look at all the combinations for these users, user UA has visited websites ABA in this order, whereas user B has visited websites ABC. So essentially you have ABA one pattern, ABC one pattern and both have score one because there is no common score, right? So then you have to find lexicographically smallest pattern which is ABA and return that as an output. So I hope you understand the question better with an example. Now let's see how do we go about coding it. Now you must be wondering how do we know that it's a graph question. So the keyword here tuple which talks about username, website and timestamp tuples indicates that we might need an adjacency list in the same order of timestamps. And that's how I get to know that, okay, this might be a graph question. So I hope that question is addressed. If you have any other doubts, ask them in the comments here and I'll be happy to address it. Now let's start coding this question. I need to first do certain imports. So I'll first import from collection, import default dict. And then I need all the combinations here. Remember I showed you an example. That A, B, C, D, E are five websites which Joe has visited and the possible combinations could be A, B, C, A, C, D, B, C, D, B, T, E. So for getting all those combinations in Python, you have a library and a tool. So from iter tools, I will import combinations. So remember these two. So first of all, I'll initialize my dictionary, which would be default dict. And it would be a dictionary of list because I'll be saving all my lists there. Now, how do I call these tuples of username, website and timestamp? And how do I, you know, capture them in this dictionary? So I will take four timestamp and user and website in. So I need them in sorted order of timestamps. So that's why music sorted and then say, and then we have three arrays timestamp username and the third array I have is website. I dig them and then I capture that this particular users is this website which he has or she has visited. So that's how I'm capturing it. Now I don't need the timestamps to be captured because I'm taking it in sorted order of timestamps already. So I don't need all those timestamps because I'm not returning them an answer. I just needed my users and websites corresponding to the timestamps in sorted order. So that's all. Now I'm initialize my score dictionary. So my scores dictionary would be again a default dig. And it would be a dic dictionary of integers because the scores are integers. And then I will go through for all the user and website in whatever my G is, G dot items. After that, I will check for each pattern. So for pattern. And how do I check? And I have to ensure that those patterns are not repeated again and again. So say suppose a pattern is ABC. It's not getting repeated again as ABC. So I will take a unique set of combinations. And in combinations, there are two parameters. You provide websites, which is your websites corresponding to the user. And then you provide the length of patterns you want. So I want the length as three. So for pattern in set combinations, website three. So essentially it will create all the patterns of size 3, all the combinations and then you can increment your scores for that pattern by 1 every time you come across them. So that's how you are updating your scores corresponding to a particular pattern. And how are you getting those patterns? You are getting those patterns by taking combinations from iter tools and taking a unique set of those combinations so that there is no repetition happening. Now I initialize my max pattern. And my max score or max count here. So my max pattern initially is in initialized as empty string. And my max count is initialized as zero. Now I, I loop around the scores dictionary. So for pattern and count in score dot items. And I'll check if my count is greater than my max count. If it is greater than max count, what do I do? I, I make my max pattern as this pattern 
and my max count as this count. But you remember I told you that there is an exception that more than one pattern could have the max count. In that case, you take the lexicographically smallest pattern. How do you handle such a scenario here? So here you will have OR and what would be that OR condition? That your count is still equal to your max count, but your pattern is less than your max pattern. Essentially, that it occurred before the other pattern occurred, which has the same count. If that is the case, you again update your max pattern. Okay, so I hope you understand how we are handling that exception here. And finally, what do you return as your output? You just need to return your max pattern, the pattern for which you got the maximum score. So let's run this. It's accepted. Let's sum it. As you can see, our solution is doing quite well here. Now let me uh, walk you through the solution once more so that if you have any doubts, it just gets clarified. And then I'll explain you what are the time complexities and space complexities here. First of all, I imported two things here. One, a default dict from collections because I need it for the graph as well as for the scores dictionary. And from iter tools, I get combinations because I want all possible combination of patterns. So now I initialize my default dict for a list. And then I run through the zip of three arrays, timestamp, username, and website. But I need them in sorted order of timestamp. Hence, I'm applying sorted here. And then I'm capturing everything for each user. So every user, I have a list of websites. And that's why I have initialized default dict with the list. Because I need to capture a list of websites the particular user, the user visited in this order, sorted order of these timestamps. So I hope you understand this aspect of the code. Now I initialize a default dict within teachers for scores where I'll be capturing a user's pattern and then its score. So for user websites in this graph, which I have got this adjacency list, it goes through this and then it checks for all possible unique combinations and hence I've applied set here of size 3 and then it increases the score for each pattern it finds by 1 and goes on. Now I need to find that pattern which has the maximum score. To do that I first initialize max pattern and max count by some random value. Here I am initializing max pattern as empty and max count as 0. Now I run through scores.items and look at all the patterns and their counts. So there are two conditions I need to handle. One thing is if the count is greater than max count. In that scenario, it's easier. You update your max pattern, you ma update your max count and return your max pattern. But I also need to handle that scenario when you have more than one pattern having the max score. In such a scenario, I put this condition that the count might be equal to max count, but your pattern is lexicographically smaller. That is your pattern is less than max pattern. In that scenario, also you update your max pattern and max count with the current pattern and count and you return your max pattern. So now I hope the code is clear to you. Ask your questions here in comments. Now time complexity. So since here we are using these combinations and we are making these combinations of three every time for websites. So essentially we are doing n raised to power three here. And so the, your time complexity would be O of n raised to power three. Now, when we talk about space complexity, if you see for the adjacency list, I'm actually using a default dict and capturing the list there. And same base for scores, I'm using a default dict and capturing the patterns of three there with the scores, right? So essentially, the space complexity also is n raised to power three because every time I find a pattern, I capture the pattern as well as its score and they all are of size three and I'm adding them to the dict. So the space and type complexity both would be O of n raised to power 3. I hope the question is clear to you. If you liked my way of solving problems, subscribe to my channel to get your notifications for your daily lead code challenge. If you want me to prioritize any particular question which you have come across in one of your interviews, also do mention it. I would be happy to take it forward. Thank you.